What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. Today, we got uh, f someone from Storms United, our good friend Ethan WX, on the line. Ethan, how are you doing? Doing good today. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. So, basically, I wanted you to come on to talk about what's going on. Hurricane season's been getting pretty active. We're, we already have three areas of interest. They're not particularly of l uh, large percentages or anything like that. There's not a high chance development, but... Considering this is late July and we're already seeing stuff like this, what's your thought process about this so far? Well, it's obvious that we do have a lot of convective activity coming off of Africa into the main development region. Now, really, none of these storms have managed to form the tropical cyclones yet because there is a lot of shear, which you know we're going to talk about. But, but yeah, this is uh, it's very. It's, there's definitely the potential for a lot of activity a bit later in the season once the shear decreases. And yeah. we start getting into August, September when the conditions become more favorable aloft for tropical cyclone development. Right. So comparative to last year, is the shear much better? Is it like compared to last year because the shear was late to, to start weakening? Um, is it better than it was at this point last year or are we about the same period? Now, keep in mind, last year was kind of similar. We didn't have a lot of activity really until like you know, mid-September when Hurricane Fiona formed. So there was definitely a lot of shear through most of August. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, you know, over the next month. But if the shear does decrease, you know, we'll definitely see more tropical storms, more named systems, because there's obviously a ton of activity going on right yeah. now. Yeah, I have right now for our audience the shear forecast from the European. This is the Zero Z run. Um, basically what I'm noticing, at least for like for the next 10 days, the shear is basically fluctuating off and on, off and on across much of the Caribbean, typically stuff you'd see in July so far. Like, what do you think about this? Do you think this is going to be the start of a downward trend or do you think it still needs to fluctuate? And then yeah, that starts in a few weeks. Like I said, like I said, it's only late July. This is still technically pretty early in the hurricane season because you don't usually see your peak activity until September anyways. And in recent years, it's been, you know, a bit later, like later in September into October. Yeah. So I could totally see, you know, we still have plenty of time for things to change. And, you know, a lot of sources are now predicting a above average hurricane season, which is unusual considering that we are in an El Nino phase right now. Yeah. I so I do think that, you know, once we get toward the end of August and the shear decreases with consistency, then you will start seeing more named storms because that's usually what happens when you get into the main part of hurricane season, when you have less shear as well as less Saharan dust and dry air. So I do think it will eventually, uh, the conditions will become more favorable for sure. All right. So I want to go ahead and pivot to our next section, which is on the dry air. We have a lot of Sahara dust that is in the Atlantic right now. Um, what's your take on all of the Sahara dust and when could we start seeing that last line of defense start breaking? Yeah, so that's definitely going to, you know, pre pre it's definitely going to hurt the chances for any of these systems that are currently out there. Because let's see, we got three disturbances that the NHC is tracking. You know, one of them is just off the coast of Africa, 0% for the next 48 hours, 20% for the next seven days. And then we got another one that's 10 10, and another one kind of in between the Bahamas and Bermuda that's 0 10. And the Saharan dust kind of covers a big part of the basin right now. So at the moment, yeah, it's going to definitely impede any development of these systems. I don't think any of them will form, although the one that's off the coast of Africa right now, there are some long range model runs that have that forming into a significant tropical cyclone as it moves further east. Right. So, right. So, sorry to interrupt, but I have the GFS pulled up. The 12Z run, in my opinion, really goes off on a limb. And by four, six days out, it has this thing strengthening into a hurricane at the basically the point where this is supposed to even develop in the first place. Um, a lot of people I've been talking to, they've been, been looking at the GFS and they're like, oh my god, what's go uh, going on? Should we look at this uh, model without a grain of salt? What's your take on this? Yeah, now, you notice if you look at the European model, you don't even see that system there. 
Yeah, so, we're pulling that up right now. So I'd say right now, uh, uh, the GFS has definitely been showing that that tropical cyclone for a while now. But like I said, it, the other models aren't really catching on to it. And it's still pretty far out. If the European was showing that too, it's, it would definitely be something we would want to look at. All if right. you're talking about Servants 3, that was just marked earlier today. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, that's, ladies and gentlemen, that is Cat on the line. Um, yeah, this was something that really popped up. The NHC actually delayed their whole uh, update out until after 2 p.m. Eastern time because they were seeing this. And this is, like I said earlier, something that we've been keeping an eye on all across the community. Now, the last thing I want to go ahead and get to is the ridiculous global sea temperatures we have been seeing across the Gulf, across the Bahamas, across pretty much all of the Atlantic. And I'm not sure if you saw this, but we have an unconfirmed report of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit of a water temperature in the, near, the floor, uh, near the Florida Keys off the Everglades. I think at one point it was 101. Yeah, yeah they not did sure. say it was 101. Although it was noted that that could be faulty equipment, because 101 sea temperatures is really just incredible. Like that's a world record there. Even the Persian Gulf doesn't get that hot near Iraq and Iran. So I would take that with a grain of salt because they did say it's potential malfunctioning. But what is known for sure is that the whole area around South Florida is exceedingly warm. You know, there are a lot of places that are reporting 90 to 95 or even a little higher than that. So. It's all incredibly warm, record-breaking sea temps, devastating for the environment, too. And the entire Atlantic Ocean is basically above average right now. Yeah. I believe that and the current... If I'm correct, ain't that where that one disturbance is going? Ain't it going to be riding the coast? Uh, yeah, are you, if you're talking about the one in North Carolina, yeah, it's... Moving, it's going to be moving through some of these warmer waters, although the wind shear is going to be fluctuating, so I'm not sure how that's going to play a role until I see some more model runs of the system and analyze it further. Yeah, we're going to have to, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that other disturbance was officially classified as an invest, by the yeah, way. Yeah, 95L, we've been keeping an eye on it. Um, 1010, at this point, Europeans trying to throw it a bone, but I'm not giving it that much attention anymore i'm more yeah focused. the 18 z gfs is coming out right now yeah and i'm looking at that system that it was showing forming into a hurricane and the 18 z run is much less enthusiastic about it that's for sure yeah so this is also another reason why you don't take the gfs at face value right here so my last thing i want to cover is the ohc compared to where we were in 2020 which was a hyperactive season it's much more expansive in the Atlantic. We have a lot more areas of 175 plus OHC ocean heat content. It's registered in kilojoules per centimeter squared. That's a lot of energy right there. And what do you guys think about this? Yeah, I mean, this year you've probably heard a lot out of the news and on Twitter. I'm you know, the ocean's genuinely over. not sure what to say. Yeah. Uh, Ethan, please go ahead. Yeah, as, as I was saying, the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean as a whole is just record-breaking temperatures this year all around. I believe that the entire base, the entire like North Atlantic on average is 1.5 degrees Celsius above the mean from, you know, whatever, 1990 to 2020. So it's incredibly hot. It's by far the warmest on record. And with that, the ocean heat content is, is also really high. The, the warm water extends very far down. So the... The fuel for strong tropical cyclones is certainly there. Once we get past the shear, the Saharan dust, I have no doubt that there will be a lot of activity come September. You know, at this point, most professional sources are indicating that it will be an above average year despite the El Nino conditions. So, yeah, yeah. once we just get past that, that early season, those early season factors, it will definitely be primed for tropical cyclone development because the ocean is not cooling down anytime soon. Like what happened last year with the whole month of August being dead silent. And then like the first day we got into September, it was, it went downhill from there. Yeah. It was mainly due to that dust and that shear right there, which is why I'm so concerned, especially because it's late July and the warm waters are basically one to two months ahead of schedule, but the shear and the dust are right on schedule. So 
that's my concern with all this. My last question to you guys is, whether you want to estimate or not, how many storms do you think we're going to get from this? I am personally thinking 18 to 20, which is above average. I believe the average is somewhere around 14. Yeah. I, it's not going to be a hyperactive season like 2005 or 2020. Like 2020, by this point, you know, Isaias about to form. You know, yep. we're not that far along. And 2020 had what 30 named storms. 30. Yeah. Uh, actually, that was a lot. That was a lot. That was a lot. Hold on. Year with cat, hold on. Extreme, yeah, that was a La Nina year with extremely warm SSTs and basically very little wind shear or dust. This year, the dust of the shear are definitely there. But, you know, once we get past that, I think September will be a very active month, probably from late August through October. That whole time frame is going to be pretty active and it's going to be a surprise to people yeah. who expect it to be less active since we're in El Nino. Yeah. Uh, Kat, what do you th- uh, what do you think about uh, how many storms could you estimate from this? Honestly, I can agree with Ethan on that. Yeah. All right. What, what, you sorry, I cut you off for a second. What were you trying to add add in? I was gonna say how with twenty twenty, I think we had like close to thirty named storms that year. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, what is, you know, 2020, I personally, is what I think is interesting is there was not one storm that was missed that was not named. <laughs> we even think. got into the Greek alphabet <laughs> with that. Uh, yeah, we went, we, we got all the way to Iota and we would have had another one. Yeah, so that pretty much. Yeah, we, it, got, we had 30 named storm, which, storms, which was a record as well as seven major hurricanes. And that was a record tied with 2005. Yeah. This year is not going to be that active. I would think 18 named storms, probably half as many hurricanes, and then maybe four, three three to four, maybe five major hurricanes. All right. Depending on exactly how things play out by September. All right. Well, with this year, we've already had a hurricane that I don't think was forecasted to become a hurricane. Yeah, we had Dawn that was in the subtropical Atlantic that in July became a hurricane. So it may be a big indicator. We're not sure. We'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Thank you uh, guys for coming on. Uh, I'll link their channels down below. If you guys want to come hang out with us or talk about the weather on Storms United, link up for the server is right over there. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.